Hello plant people, it's Nora the Lekker Queen here. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel. Today I will be responding to a question that has been asked by Vishnu. And Vishnu asked this question on my weekly question post on my community tab. So if you don't know about this initiative, I'll tell you a little bit about, about it now. I've, I'll be doing a weekly post where you, you can ask me any question. That you like. I will then pick at random a question to address and I will respond to this question in a video because it's really hard sometimes to respond to some of the questions that you ask in the comments so I thought this would be a good way of um, addressing some of the things that you guys are constantly asking me about. So today Vishnu asked me about the pros and cons of using semi-hydroponics and what's a good plant to use as a beginner plant when someone is starting with semi-hydroponics. So um, semi-hydroponics, as you might know, is the use of a growth medium that's not soil and not using any pumps and things to get the nutrient solution flowing. So generally in my practice, I use LECA, which is uh, clay balls. I'll show you some of my LECA balls. So these are some of my LECA balls. This is what you commonly would know as LECA. So LECA is really just clay balls. And instead of using soil, I plant my plant in this. Now, what are the advantages? One of the things I love the most about using semi-hydroponics and LECA is the fact that I don't have any pests anymore. You will know um, one of the things about having lots and lots of indoor plants is that you get a lot of fungus gnats. A lot of people have a lot of fungus gnats and I definitely had a lot of fungus gnats. And if you do have lots of plants, you will know what this is. You know, you're just sitting around minding your own business and there's just gnats everywhere. They're just buzzing everywhere. They're so annoying. But since I started using semi-hydroponics, zero gnats. I do not have a gnat problem in my house. I used to have all these, you know, those yellow tabs, that those yellow sticky tabs to get all the flying creatures. I used to have them everywhere. All gone, all gone, all gone. Because all these fungus gnats, aphids, they all like to you know, go and burrow in the soil. It's moist. There's great medium for them to lay their eggs. And it's just a continuous cycle. You get rid of the adults, the babies are hatching. It's just constant and constant and constant. But since I started using semi-hydroponics, they've got nowhere to lay their eggs. There's no dampness anywhere. And I just don't have that problem. The next thing that I really love about using semi-hydroponics is that your plant has consistent water supply. So I've got one of my plants here. This is one of my ZZ plants and it lives in this reservoir. See, that is my nutrient solution in there, that liquid dropping there is my nutrient solution and of course because it's a solution it's got water in there as well so it's got the nutrients and it's got water so the roots of this plant are actually in there and even if the roots would, weren't growing in there the leka is in constant contact with the nutrient solution and that nutrient solution moves up from the bottom to the top to the roots by capillary action and basically the plant always has water always has water and in the same vein the plant always has access to nutrients so you know how some people actually very ever, very very rarely fertilize their plants so they'll fertilize at the beginning of summer and just not do it again until the next summer so plants in semi-hydroponic setup always have a nutrient solution and they always have food so they get what they need and they're happy that's another thing that i really really like one of the other really great things about using leka is that it's it's renewable it's a renewable resource so this is leka that i've actually used in a plant and i've either changed the leka over because maybe there was too much algae or something like that and um, I then just go and sterilize this lecker and it can just be as simple as boiling it, you know, on your cooktop for about 10, 15 minutes and that sterilizes it. Just simply boiling it makes it ready for you to use for your next plant. So once you've got yourself a 50 liter bag of lecker, for example, you won't need to buy another one. 
unless you've got new plants and you need more lecker. But apart from that, you can just keep reusing and reusing the same lecker and that's not an issue, which is, which can, the same cannot be said for soil. Because with soil, once that soil has been used by one plant, you're not using the same soil for the next plant, largely because A, um, the nutrients in the soil have been used up by the plant that was in there before, but also the plant that was in there before might have had all sorts of pests in that soil. So if you put a new plant in that soil, you're exposing it to that. So generally people tend to throw out the soil and then you go and buy new soil and you're constantly buying new soil. Another thing about soil actually is there's different soil preparations for different kinds of plants. So you might have an orchid mix, you'll have a succulent mix, you'll have another mix for aeroid plants. But with leka, it's just leka. There's no leka for succulents and leka for air. It's just one simple thing. So you've only got one thing that you're using for all your plants. That's another thing that makes it really, really useful. But one of the things I like about Lekka is it really promotes root health. And I'll show you what I mean when I say root health. So I've got my, I've used my ZZ plant. It's a really good example of this. These are the roots of my ZZ plants. Look at that. Those roots are really, really healthy and they are loving life in semi-hydroponics. But what's really good as well about Lekka is that you can actually see the roots inside the pot. So you don't necessarily need to have the roots coming all the way out there. You can see them inside. And if there's something happening with your roots, you can actually tell that either there's root rot or there's something going on. And it's very easy to actually remedy the situation. The other thing I love about growing in semi-hydroponics is that you'll see with this particular plant, my pots have these holes. So there's weight aeration between the holes that are in the pot and the spaces that are, you find in between the leka. There's just a lot of air around those roots and roots thrive with a lot of aeration. So that works out really, really well for my plants. Um, I love the leka plant look. It, I, I think it just looks so nice. I just love that look the plant, the, the balls. I just love it. I, I really, really like it. I think it looks beautiful. So it's an aesthetic thing for me as well. I love the way it looks. Now, with anything that's got pros, there's cons. Obviously, there's cons. So let's talk about some of the cons. The first con for using semi-hydroponics really is the startup cost. It does tend to be a bit pricey at the start. And it's really at the start because once you've got your leka, that's reusable, so you use it all the time. So there's that cost, whereas with soil, you'll have to keep purchasing and keep purchasing. So you make your savings in the long run with that. The other thing that you need to do when you're using semi-hydroponics is because semi-hydroponic media actually doesn't have any nutrients in it, you do need to get nutrients. So things like, this is what I use. I use um, Growth Technology Foliage Focus, and I'm really fortunate in the fact that I can actually use a product which is just one product. I know a lot of um, places, especially in America, you guys tend to use like three products to mix up your nutrient solution. I just use the one and I'm really, really lucky. So other things that you might find that you might need to buy when you're starting with semi-hydroponic are things like um, things to monitor your pH. So this is a pH uh, meter and I hardly ever use this to be honest because I have checked out the pH of my solutions and it's the right pH, so I never have to constantly check my pH, so that works really well. Um, another thing that um, people talk about a lot with um, semi-hydroponic startup is the cost of new pots. Now, it, <laughs> this one is, is a bit of a weird one because you could go all the way and get all these self-watering type pots, which you don't necessarily need to do, or you could just go down the route that I go down. I have my pot this is a normal nursery pot and i make these holes in the pot if you haven't seen my video where i show you how to make self you know diy basically net pots 
click on the link above and that'll take you straight to it. So all you need is a normal nursery pot, make some holes in it and there you've got a net pot which encourages aeration through to the roots and we've already talked about that. The other thing that you'll need when you're doing semi-hydroponics is a cash pot depending on what method you're using. I like to use the cash pot method. So this is my cash pot. So this is my plant and it goes in there. The cash pot doesn't have a hole because that's where my nutrient solution goes. So this, again, that's just really simple. That's just a food container, empty yogurt container, anything. I cover it up with tape so that I don't have algae growing in there. And I've got a video that explains all about algae and how to prevent it in a semi-hydroponic setup. If you haven't seen it, just click on the link above. That'll take you straight to it. And that's all I do. I've got this cheap DIY cash pot in my, DI in my DIY net pot. And that is my semi-hydroponic setup. That's it. Now, you might say to me, Nora, I really don't like the look of that. It looks a bit ugly. Eh, you know, fair enough. Fair enough, if you want something pretty, you can do that. So I've got my Syngonium Wonderlandii here, and this one is also living in a pot. So as you can see, this is a dark pot. I generally don't like to go the dark pot route, but I didn't have a pot this size. This is all I had. So yeah, I just made holes in this one and made it work. And this is my cash pot. So this is a ceramic pot that does not have a hole and that's where my nutrient solution goes. That looks a lot prettier than the black one, the DIY one, and that's something you could do. So that is my semi-hydroponic setup over there. Very, very simple. So, you know, we flip it over. We flip over the pots are expensive. We try and make our own pots and there, and also depending on how many plants you've got, you could, you could it is possible to find ceramic pots that don't have holes. Um, the other thing that might be considered a con when you're using semi-hydroponics and when you're using Lekka is that when you buy the Lekka and it's new and you get it out of the bag, there is a lot of dust. Lekka is very, very dirty. I've got a quick demonstration here that shows you um, what Lekka looks like when it's clean and when it's dirty and you know, run some water through it and that's how dirty it can be. So when you just get your lekka, you need to go and wash it. And it takes a few washes to actually get it to a place where it's clean-ish and usable. It will never really be 100% clean because it is clay and the clay does slough off, but you know, you want to get it as clean as you possibly can. Now, this can be a bit of an annoying process if you're not really, you know, if you really just want to get home, get your plant, put it in, you know, put it up in the new pot. This is just something you have to do. So in addition to actually washing your lekka, you do have to soak your lekka as well. Because when you buy new, that lekka is dry as a bone. So you want that lekka to have absorbed that moisture, to have absorbed your nutrient solution, your water, because it'll get that liquid to the roots by capillary action. And capillary action can only work if the balls are actually wet. So you do have to soak them. I personally like to soak my lekker for not less than 24 hours. Some people have been known to soak their lekker for even an hour if they're really in a bind and just want to get it done. But I certainly recommend soaking your lekker for um, a longer period of time because it does make sure that the lekker absorbs all the water that it needs to. I've got my Hoya Lotterbachi here with me and it's going to help me demonstrate one of the cons of using semi-hydroponics and using Lekka actually. I hope I can actually show this to you properly. So if you take a look at this Lekka, it looks quite, you've got this white residue at the top there. So that's the mineral residue, so that's minerals from the nutrient solution, from the water that has um, collected at the top of those clay balls. That's what that is. So this needs to be cleaned and that lekka needs to be flushed. That's what, that's what 
you, that's why you need to flush your liquor. You probably have heard that term flushing the liquor. So all that is, is go on to a tap, wash that off and that's fine. With this one though, um, that residue has been there for quite some time and I don't think just cleaning off this liquor. I don't think washing that liquor will actually get, I don't think washing that liquor will actually get most of that off. What I'll have to do is actually remove that liquor and probably put this plant in some fresh liquor. And that doesn't happen too often, but it looks like, I mean, look at this plant here. It's got roots everywhere. It looks like this actually might need uh, pot upgrade as well. So what I'll then do is I'll just take the plant out of that pot, get a bigger pot the next size up, get some fresh clean liquor, put the plant in that, get the old liquor, clean that off. And once you clean that liquor using the method I described above, just once you clean that liquor, just boiling it or however you clean your liquor, that's going to be good to go for the next time you need to use it. So yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much the pros and cons that I really can think of. Um, people, uh, yeah, some people think using semi-hydroponics is a lot of work because you have to do all these things. Um, it's, I've, I actually found that for me, it actually helped my plant care because when I started getting really into indoor plants, I accumulated a lot of plants in a very short period of time. And then of course the reality of taking care of the plants hit. I had to water them all the time. I had to figure out whether they needed watering or not. I had to try and make sure that I wasn't over watering or under watering. A lot of my Hoyas were losing a lot of leaves because I was under watering and it all just got a bit too overwhelming. I did find that moving into semi-hydroponics helped me so much and it's been so easy for me to take care of my plants. Um, yes, so for me personally, having a very large collection of plants, semi-hydroponics works for me. So there you go, Vishnu. Those are my comments about the pros and cons of semi-hydroponics. What plants would I recommend a beginner use? I would certainly recommend a person use things like, you know, the pothos scooper plants, very, very forgiving. That's a good plant and they're, you know, easily accessible, not too expensive. And, you know, if things go wrong, you can just get another one. But if someone is trying to get into indoor plants for the first time, surprisingly, I would say that probably you, using soil might be the easier way to go um, up until you're you're a bit more confident in what you're doing you're a bit more confident in what plants look like what a plant that's in need looks like um, you get into the habit of actually taking care of your plants and then I think it's better to make the switch to liquor once you've got those systems in place um, I, I would I mean you could go straight into using semi-hydroponics if you are that way inclined. And I would greatly encourage you to do that. But I think for the vast majority of people, getting into the habit of taking care of plants first might be a better way to go. Otherwise, then they might think semi-hydroponics is too hard. But yeah, there you go. Um, that is for you, Vishnu. Those are the pros and cons of semi-hydroponics and my two cents on what's the best method to use when you're starting out in taking care of plants. Thank you so very much for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and do not forget to go and comment on the weekly post because next week I might be responding to a question from you. So thanks a lot guys. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.